So let's just look at how we would modify it. The author of the book is not going to show you everything about an AVL tree. They're just going to demonstrate what you would have to do. So you basically take the binary search tree and the idea is whenever you reorganize things, which is when you put or delete, you're going to update the balance. And the update the balance may mean that you uh, have to change the tree and that's what we're going to look at. So basically this is the put from the book uh, for the binary search tree and you have to add just two new lines. So after you have inserted the new node here or here you have to call uh, on the current node update balance on either the left child or right child. So you notice when you insert on the right child here so the current node is uh, right child is where we're inserting a new node then we call update balance on that child and uh, so that's going to check the balance and then do uh, uh, move nodes around to fix it if we have to. Now here's how update balance looks. So update balance has to update the balance factors and then take an action if it's out of balance. So first it checks the current node it's being passed and if th that node's balance factor is greater than one or less than minus one it's out of balance so it's going to call rebalance. And rebalance will be a method that's responsible for moving nodes around to get the balance back in place. If it has a parent then it's going to check uh, if the node is a left child or a right child and it's going to increment or decrement the balance. So it's basically going to set a new balance factor and then if the uh, node balance parent balance factor is not zero it's going to call update balance on the parent to uh, possibly move things around on the parent to balance things. So how do we rebalance a node? So let's look at a little example. Uh, let's suppose we have a tree and we've just inserted or done the delete and we have this situation. So here we have something that's out of balance. So there's a node E here has a balance of 2. So this has to be rebalanced. So what we're going to do is basically uh, this is part of the, the, you can look at this as a very tiny tree or just a subtree we need to rebalance after we do an operation. So this is to give you the idea and what we're going to do is something called rotating the nodes. So this tree is out of balance, but you'll notice, uh, so E, C, and B are the keys. We've looked at numeric keys before, but this time we're looking at alphanumeric. So C is less than E, and B is less than C. So this is the property of a binary search tree. And what we want to do is reorganize these so it's still a binary search tree. And what we do is we rotate uh, the C up and the E down. So basically the C is coming up here and E is going down. So we end up with a new tree that looks like this. So it's still a binary search tree and you'll see C is at the top. It's the uh, root of this subtree and B is on the left and then E has been moved over to the right. So it still meets the conditions B is less than C and uh, E is greater than C. So you want to look at this a little bit. This is how we reorganize the tree. So when we're done, you'll notice here's the there everything's balanced exactly. So there is nothing uh, imbalanced even by one. So you can see this operation balances everything. Now it's a little more complicated because real trees, uh, all of these nodes may have subtrees underneath them. So let's look at what that looks like. Okay, here we're looking at the same situation. We have E, C, D, and we're going to right rotate so the B, C, E becomes B, C, E. But here we're showing all the subtrees that are possible underneath these nodes. So the main thing you'll see is C, when it moves up, to the right E has to go here. So where does D go? D used to be the right child of C, so now where did it go? Now, because D, all the nodes in the subtree D are greater than C but less than E, we can put them here. So now they're less than E but they all have to be greater than C because this subtree is part of this larger subtree which is greater than C. So basically we're going to move 
the subtree that D is and attach it to the left child of E. And that's okay because E's left child no longer points to C. It, uh, so it, it's available for that. So uh, basically that's this is called the full right root rotate and so we have to write code to handle all this. Uh, so we're going to look at specifically the code to do that next. Okay, so here we have the code for doing a right rotate. Um, the left rotate is going to be uh, symmetrical to this, and left rotate, we'll, we'll cover uh, some diagrams of that later. And there's some other rotates we have to do to balance things. Uh, but you'll notice there's a diagram here that shows what's going on. So this shows you the, the uh, basically, these green is the original three nodes we're going to rotate. That's from the previous slide and it shows the uh, balance factors and everything. And these can all point to subtrees, so we're just showing the top node of those subtrees. Now remember, the subtrees may not exist, these may be null, so we have to, that's what the ifs primarily are checking, if uh, there actually is a null subtree or not, so it can skip some steps. This shows the final rotate, so here we have B, C, and E are rotated, um, and this shows you D is moved over to be the left child of E, where it was the right child of C. So these numbers here are all the th changes we have to make. Um, so you can see we're going to have to, if, since C becomes the new root, whatever's above the subtree, the parent links uh, left or right have to change. And uh, you'll see that uh, we have to have E point to D, so that's a change, and D has to now point up to E. And so all these numbered either red or blue, blue represent points to parents, and red represent pointing to child, uh, all these links have to be set in the code. So these number represent the lines of code that do that up here. So you can follow through uh, on your own time and look at every line that of, that's numbered here and you'll see it actually sets up all these links. So when we're all done, um, we arrive down in here, we finally set the, the new root, uh, right child, that's number 14 is the last one, and the parent of the root, uh, rotate root, is set the new roots, so that's number 15. So that's right here. And so after those two done, the last thing we do is update the balance factor here. So there's a little uh, section of the book that shows you why we're using this formula for the balance factor and uh, we'll show you that in a couple slides but these last two will update the balance factor for uh, that we have to change.